James Guthrie has lifted certain elements of this album from the sonic fog of the original mix. But I can't help but feel that this isn't going to be everybody's bag of feed. Welcome classic rock fans to my comparison of the new James Guthrie mix of Animals with the 1994 remaster. If you haven't done so already, please do click like, subscribe and check that notification bell and check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done at Classic Album Review. Animals is a spiky album, there's no doubt about that, with Waters venting his spleen in this vitriolic growl at the injustices of capitalism. In fact, he's done so ever since, leaving many to surmise that maybe not all his dogs are barking. Well, they certainly are on this album because James Guthrie has lifted those little atmospherics up to present us with an interesting and new uh, sonic palette or rendering of this album. This album, this Orwellian beast fable, as I like to call it, is a fraught affair that channels the anger and frustration of the band members very much into this music, never more apparent than in Gilmore's curt and stabbing guitar, very much attuned with the, the bile expressed in the lyrics. One can almost draw a comparison with Richard Wright's playing on Wish You Were Here, which embodies an elegiac grace, uh, which feels valedictory, a requiem to a fallen friend. This album has always been a bit brittle and has a, a thrum uh, and menacing atmosphere that pulsates through the original mix, of course softened by the book ending of Pigs on the Wing. And that's what I love about this album. It's what I love about the original mix. I must admit, when I first heard that somebody was actually going to tamper with that, to me it felt almost akin to some upstart kitchen orderly pissing in the Vichy Soirs. But I'm, I'm being a bit glib there, I think. I don't mean to undermine James Guthrie's efforts. He's done a wonderful job, really. Uh, and the man has worked with Floyd since Animals, or certainly since before the wall. But I think um, the analogy that I make uh, at its core has an eternal truism, and that is, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Many see this album as Floyd's repost to punk that was pogoing its way across the British Isles at the time. But for me, I, I rather see this as a perfect precursor to that sprawling hymn to alienation that we would get a, a couple of years down the road. Uh, a road, of course, that would be littered with numerous stadium gigs with Waters losing his shit on a nightly basis, eventually gobbing on somebody in Montreal. I suggest, of course, that this album, in some respects, is a bit of a lost album, eclipsed by Dark Side of the Moon and overshadowed by The Wall. And James Guthrie has attempted to platform the greatness of this album in this new shiny mix. But I can't help but feel that uh, all that glitters is not gold. And by emphasising the individual parts, I can't help but feel that the sum of those parts is a tad diminished. Some of the instrumental passages in this new mix to have been enhanced, which are certainly interesting to hear. Uh, Richard Wright's keyboard playing is much more nuanced. We can hear lots of little bits that we didn't notice before. I love the ominous air of that acoustic guitar in Pigs of the Wing and the, the forward vocal that is now uh, certainly apparent. And that links with those uh, that incessant and angry strum of those dampened strings on dogs. And that is before the electric guitar work announces itself in this... Uh, amid the the atmospheric swirl of uh, Richard Wright's keyboard parts and of course Nick Mason's drum rolls and snare has also been emphasised in this new mix. But I feel the crisp and cutting tone of Dogs is somewhat a little bit at odds with the original mix which I felt a little bit more menace, was a bit more paranoid, felt closed in and claustrophobic. And of course James Guthrie has gone back to the original analogue tapes. The original album was of course mixed by Pink Floyd with the help of engineer uh, Brian Humphreys. I think this was the first project that they embarked upon in their uh, freshly constructed Britannia Row studio in London. And in terms of the original mix, one reviewer has uh, quite rightly said that uh, Pink Floyd are a band renowned for releasing sonically excellent albums with great care and thought put into the choices of instrument position and the selection of mics. The amount and types of effects and positioning and strength of the tracks within the uh, stereo spectrum. And I have to say the digital remaster in 1994 sounded excellent. But what has changed? 
if you'll forgive me for referring to my notes, which is a bit of a catchphrase for me these days. Um, Pigs on the Wing, the, um, the, the vocal has been brought forward, which is quite interesting. Dogs, of course, we get that very percussive strum. Uh, the vocal is slightly right of centre now, I think, and as well emphasised. Um, big differences, I think, are Rick, Rick Wright's keyboard parts in this, which are more prominent, more nuanced. I think I love that synth section that we get now. It's interesting to hear bits there that we didn't hear before. And Nick Mason's toms are much more evident. The guitar solo is louder and more forward. And the new mix allows us to hear some of Gilmore's trail-offs. Uh, um, a lot more clearly. Wright's keyboards are perfectly placed I think. Um, Mason's hi-hat is also emphasized. The very echoey instrumental allows us to uh, appreciate um, Wright's contributions to this track a lot more as I've just said and this is emphasized I think with some new panning that perhaps wasn't there in the original mix. With Pig's three different ones the uh, sound effects are much more prominent with the that porker being almost quite intrusive really, truffling away before our attention is seized once more by the stabbing guitar. There's a panning on the drum fills, um, which I'm not sure were there before, and the bass line I think has been lifted. Even Roger's uh, pig stain on your fat chin is brought forward slightly, it's not so subdued. Mason's drum is loud and Gilmore's backing vocal, believe it or not, is more prominent, more noticeable. I think the instrumental bit uh, as well, has, a, has some new panning effects which I'm not sure were there in the original mix. And the guitar at the end sounds absolutely fantastic. And we get Sheep with Rick Wright's Rhodes. Crikey, you try saying that. Uh, it just sounds so good with this, this ambient jazz. Before Nick Mason's drum fills drags us away from these soft bleatings uh, to the imminent slaughter of Waters' lyrical bite and the sardonic reworking of uh, Psalm 23. Wright's keyboards, which have been given a sonic nudge in this mix, sound almost Eno-esque. The drums are slightly loud as well. And I think there's a slight EQ adjustment during the reading of Psalm 23, which makes that part a little bit clearer. And Pigs on the Wing Part 2 is, has this warm acoustic strum, which is supposed to offset some of the, the bile and anger expressed on the rest of the album. But the vocal has been lifted slightly. It's, it's slightly fuller. I think in this new mix. Personally, I think James Guthrie's new mix is interesting. I mean, Pink Floyd's albums are always at a very high standard in terms of fidelity. And this, um, you could say, certainly modernizes the, the sound of this great, great album. And as much as I enjoyed this remix, I suspect I will just continually go back to my 1994 remaster. This issue to me is a bit of a disappointment. I was hoping for a, a box set along the lines of the immersion box sets we got a few years ago. Um, including some live audience recordings. There's some excellent live audience recordings out there that could have been included, cleaned up and put in there, as well as a, um, a nice sort of coffee table book detailing the history of this album, even if we don't get those pesky liner notes. But now the prospect of getting a box set like that for this album, well, as expressed in the old adage, pigs might fly. Anyway, you've been watching a video of a classic album review. If you've watched this video to this point, I'd like to thank you for doing that. And maybe check some of the cards that are popping up here so you can check out some other videos. Please do click like and subscribe and share this video if you've enjoyed it. Other than that, I'll leave you with my closing salvo, which as you know is hope you're well, staying safe. But more importantly, of course, is that you uh, keep listening.